the boss in the sauce show. 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 Here we go. The next number two team over here in the West, that's San Diego State Aztecs, who they talk a lot about too. They're in the uh, Pac-12 talk and all this good stuff, but uh, they have a coach who I actually like. I don't know why I like this guy, but I like Brady Hoke. Um, real thorough guy, man. Stands by what he says and does. And uh, he doesn't always have – he gets the best out of players. He doesn't always have the most talented players. Like, um, you know, the NFL scouts are not just crawling over this team, even though they're doing uh, – only allowing 19 points a game on defense. But when they play on the field, when I watch them in person, at times they look like a high school team. But then it looked like a high school team that just played so disciplined and uh, ran the scheme so well that, you know, it works out for him. But uh, this is his 15-year coaching, fourth year at this school, uh, which is a charm. You know, I'm third and fourth year coaches. You know, I, li- I like it. And overall, he's 94 and 78. Right here at San Diego State, he's 29 and 18. His offensive coordinator is Jeff Helensky, and his defensive coordinator is Kurt Maddox. So Hoke has done a good time, job of continuing the culture of San Diego State, which is um, big offensive line, real down, heavy downfield rushing, and lockdown defense, especially in the air, especially against the run. And I, like I said, out of athletes that are not the biggest in the world, but just very athletic. So they they often scored about twenty seven points a game, hundred and seventy four on the ground, one hundred and sixty seven in the air. Um, they had uh, 19 points on defense. They allowed only 88 rushing and uh, 244 in the air. So they could this year do get some help uh, bringing back that lockdown defense. That 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 too something kind of came as the season progressed because they kind of had it down for a while. They was you know top in covering the pass, but uh, it got away from them towards the end. So um, big controversy over there was the quarterback situation where they used the quarterback often. Well, luckily this year, both of them depart. They bring in Virginia Tech transfer Braxton Broomster. Bruce Myers. Broommeister. Broom Broommeister. Broommeister. There you go. And uh, this guy is pretty good. Um, supposedly he left because of coaching change, not because he wasn't the best player and nothing like that. And what Brady Hoke could use very good over here is a passer with an IQ. Because those guys are open. I mean, I went to one of the games and I ended up sitting next to um, one of the players' father who, you know, his, his son played wide receiver. I believe it was number eight, 89 or something like that. He had a big number. But um, he kept saying, you know, he's of course, that guy's watching his son the whole time. And every play they went to do the pass, he kept saying, he's open, he's open. So I took a little time out to take a look at it, too, and – Yes, indeed, he was open as open. They just couldn't distribute the ball well. And that was the game when uh, they played New Mexico State, the first game, the opening game, and they were losing at halftime and they had to come back. And the defense had the score to help bring them back. But um, definitely couldn't find the targets right there. And now they're receiving a quarterback that can get the job done. Now, on running back, they lose their number one, Greg Bell, who was a workhouse from last year. But um, – this year, they get uh, number two back, Chance Bale, along with some depth and USC's Keenan Christian. So the running back spot, they look well. They got a quarterback back that can throw the ball. I think they always had the receivers there. I don't know why uh, uh, schools that are heavy running schools have such great receivers that stay there for so long, and uh, they rarely get to you know, catch the ball like that. But I think that they have the uh, – the, wide, the talent, that wide receiver, to get the job done. I think they got the quarterback that they need. And this San Diego team, who we always looked at for the under, could become an over team because of the passing. And we seen that last year in the outer conference game where they put up like 40 and 50 points when we never thought they could. Yeah, I like this team. Um, you know, Brady Hoke, he, he's a uh, – He's a player, like you said, the players, they, they like him. I mean, they had a great season, 12-2. and two, They got to the Mountain West Championship game, right? They lost to Utah State last year. And uh, this is the fourth quarterback in, in, in as many years, the fourth year. So they get the grad transfer, Bummeister from Virginia Tech, which is a very – he's a good quarterback. 
And uh, I think, uh, you know, you know, this a ground control type offense, like you say, you know, just averaging 27 points per game. And their defense, you know, they're number one versus the run, 80 yards per game. They only give up on the ground. So mm-hmm. a lot to build on there, you know, just – I think this team can make a run for sure, you know, come back right where they came. They're putting a lot of stock, like you said, back in Fresno. But this team's going to be knocking on the door pretty hard here. And I, I, they have a lot, a lot a lot, of good looks, you know, plus 10 in the, the turnover margin. So, you know, like, like you said, down like a downhill type team, you know, in the trenches, plays good defense. They get a kid, maybe they change the dynamic just a little bit, put a little different spin on things to kind of take them right back where they left off last year. So uh, it's all going to be on that quarterback, you know, the transfer quarterback coming in. I think uh, Hope, he's a pretty sharp cookie. You know, he's the ex-Michigan guy that they gave a lot of a guff to when he was over there. But I, I think in this – and I think he's found a home out, out in the West Coast in San Diego State. I like what he does out there. Yeah, I think it's going to – you know, last year in the big uh, Mountain West championship game that they lost – um, you know, I had I had an inside um, connection that told me that the tight ends was going to be out for COVID, but I didn't calculate it in there. So the two best tight ends was out for COVID in there. So they lost two big targets right there. So a lot of people say they were lucky last year. I think it it, it was the proof was definitely in the pudding. It was just a stud team. Like they they played no bells, no whistles. They don't need all that extra, you know, stuff to know that they're good. They just play really well on the field. And now the defense, they're only going to be suffering from some uh, defensive players that left on the line, but they do have some depth. And like I said, it's the scheme. So I think they should return well. They get three back at the linebacker position. And um, they also get five coming back in the secondary. And the secondary needs a little work on paper from last year. I think they could take that 260 down to like 210 or less easily. Um, this year coming up, but uh, the secret gem to the whole thing is uh, these guys got their new stadium and it's open September the third for the opening day. So I think that the uh, the San Diego town, which I like so much when I visit San Diego, it's a wonderful place. If you ever yes, get a chance sir. to go, definitely go to San Diego. But um, they getting what they want. The, the people of San Diego, they love San Diego, so they're gonna be there to support them. I expect big things out of San Diego State. If you're looking at a Cinderella team, which they wouldn't really consider to be because they did so well last year, but this team could run the tape. You know, they could be much improved on offense. They could, they already have the defense that could only sustain the same thing or even better. So I think uh, I think they could take the West. Yeah. San Diego's got great fans, that's for sure. I know they love. I, lo- I know they love the Chargers. They love the mil- you know they love their uh, Navy the Padres, boy. There. The Padres, man, Padres. It's it's great. It's it's a great. It's a fun place to go watch uh, have sports. I know the Warriors used to play there years ago, and when they left, they were sad about that. But yeah, San Diego is a great, great sports town. A great, great atmosphere. Great everything over there. But yeah, I mean, I like it. I mean, he hit, he hit some good points here o- overall. You know, like you say, you know, they're, they're going to be they're going to be right back in the thick of things and. Look for good things for San Diego State this year. Let's go Aztecs. And I think I'm going to have to uh, – because right here at the uh, Dignity Center, I was getting $12 tickets, $10 tickets. Didn't nobody want to go to the game at the uh, at the temporary stadium. But over here, I might have to pay that $32 to go see San Diego State at the new stadium. Uh, be a wonderful evening out for me and the wife. But let's jump on over into uh, the number three spot. <laughs> 